So, uh, uh, Jim, this was really found? Yes. Yeah. That's, uh, now, the person is pretty small in the background there, but that is, uh, that's about a 10 foot tall nephilim. Uh, All right. You can pass that around if you want to. <coughs> We're in 9 and verse 16. We'll go back to our little handout uh, pretty soon. We'll read a little bit more here in, in the book of Genesis. Uh, 9.16. Anybody say, how do you say that word? 9 and verse 16. By the way, my volume 2 goes from uh, uh, 9.16 to 24.7. I have five volumes of this. <laughs> In, uh, in the book of Genesis only. <coughs> I wish I could, my hand would get better to where I could finish it. I'm at chapter 42. All right. You know how to say this now, anybody? Ba ha ye ta. All right. Ha hash tet. Ha kashet. Be anon. You read it, Tiha. The core, or Liz core, that is. And Barit, Olam, Bien, Elohim, Yuvain, Kol, Nefesh, Chaya, Bikol, Basar, Asher, El, Haaretz. All right. Let us go back and read this in English. And uh, he shall become the bow in the clouds, and I shall see it. Or him. All right. Actually, her. I shall see her. To remember, Barit, the covenant, the cutting, Olam, for eternity, be and between Elohim, and between all lot and souls. All souls. All right. All souls of life. All right. All souls of life. Now, it says here that animals have souls and mankind has souls. Everything has souls. Nefesh. All right? Nefesh. Sometimes we we talk about animals not having souls. Animals are living souls. Okay? They are living souls. We don't know a whole lot about that. Mankind, especially the, what we call the Anglo or uh, Indo-European culture, has so played down animal life that uh, they actually say animals don't even have a soul. Okay, but we know from the Hebrew that animals have souls; they are living souls. We don't know everything about them, but they are living souls. One of the first uh, <coughs> preachers I ever heard preach about this was uh, J. Lewis Guthrie, and then another guy, Ian Paisley, Ian Paisley, I think, is, he, he brought it out. He, he knew some Hebrew, and he said, you know, you hear about animals not having souls. Well, the Bible says animals have souls. All living things have souls. Well, we see it here in, in the Bible. They have nephish souls. Okay? Now, I can't explain all that. I don't know whether animals have eternal life or, or whatever. Uh, I have read all kinds of stuff in old ancient writings, rabbinical life and writings. Uh, some of the rabbis say that all animals and mankind in the beginning never were supposed to die. They weren't supposed to die. They were supposed to be to live forever. Okay? And uh, that's possible. I don't know. But it doesn't say very much about it, does it? It doesn't say too much about it. Uh, but we know that they are all animal life and human life are living souls. Nefesh Hayah. Souls living. And he refers to the animal life and mankind as souls living. All right. So now this is but to the word nephew. Nephew. That's so. That, that doesn't pertain necessarily to animal or man. No, it's, it's, it's that's soul. a soul. Right. Individual right. of life. Okay. Now that was 
And of course, Brother Hubbard, he touches just a little bit when he teaches me, and he he tells me a little bit about what uh, Dave Lewis Guthrie told him, Doctor Guthrie. And he said, I don't know too much about this, but he says animals do have souls; they are living souls. So much. And one thing about this, as we're going to study in Ham, Shem, and Japheth, I want to just show you something just slightly right now, just to give you a little inkling into what we're going to go into. But right here we have Adam. Over here we have uh, uh, his descendants, and, and then we have the flood, and then we have human government of under Noah, and we have the confusion of the languages, then we have the promise to Abraham, we have Egyptian bondage of 400 years of the Shemites in Egypt. All right, they came out of there and they came into the promised land. Now, since Abraham, now Abraham had a Shemite, a Hamite, and a Japhethite for a wife. Did you know that? See, his children could pass all of them. He had a Hamite, a Japhethite, and a Shemite for a wife. Okay. And Abraham's blood are in all three of the races from him back. How many of you ever heard of that? Just look at it. We're going to see that later. <coughs> now, right here, the the Shemites were the spiritual people. They were entrusted. The Shemites were entrusted with the spiritual well-being of the humankind. Okay? The Hamites were actually going to be trailblazers and they're going to be inventors of all things. They invent every basic invention in the world that's ever been invented except for the windmill. As far as people can tell. Who right? invented the windmill? The Indo-European. Oh, okay. Okay. And when we say Indo-Europeans, we from India and Europe. See, the original Indians were Aryans. So they're Japhethites. Okay? They were Aryans? They are Aryans. Uh, Hitler, you know, traced his lineage of the master race, the German race, which are Japhethites, mm -hmm. through the Aryans, which were in Germany, at, in India at one time. Now let's go a little bit further. So all the way up to here, from here to here, and all the way even back to Noah's day, the uh, the spiritual well-being of humanity was entrusted to the Shemites. Okay? Now catch that ball. At the cross of Calvary, when the Lord died, who ordered his death? Who ordered his death? Who ordered, demanded Jesus' death? The Shemites. The Shemites. Who carried it out? The, the Japhethites, the Romans. All Romans, all pure Romans are blonde-haired and blue-eyed. Okay? All Italians, true Italians, are blonde-haired and blue-eyed. The Germans are blonde haired, blue eyed. The French are blonde haired, blue eyed. The Italians are blonde haired, blue eyed. If they're dark hair and dark eyed, then they have Arabian blood in them. All right. Now, at the cross of Calvary, who carried Jesus' cross to Calvary? A Hamite. So we have all three races involved in the crucifixion of Christ, except Ham did the carry. The work involved. And I told you here a while back, where do we get our cheapest products? Who produces the cheapest products in the world today? It's the Hamites. Even today. They're the workers in the world. Okay. The, Ham the Hamite that carried the cross, you're talking about the black man from yes. the Niger. Yes. Now we find out the Ethiopian unit was even related to him later on. Okay. All right. They, they, their whole family in history, we know who the whole family was, historically, so to speak. I don't want to go into all these avenues. I'm just throwing things at you, just tossing things here and there, okay? All right. Now, the gospel turned from the Jews to who? The Gentiles. And the church, the Lord's churches became Gentile churches. So who was entrusted with the gospel at that time? The Japhethites. 
Jacobites, Jacobites are carrying out the gospel today. Except, according to the book of Revelation, in the last period of time, the Jacobite church is going to become more, very worldly and materialistic. Laid off seat. And they're going to say, you say you are what? Rich, but you are poor. Alright? That's what we are. The Jacobites would become materialistic and monetarily and philosophical because the Jacobites are the philosophers of the world. Alright? And, and they would turn they would turn the truth into a philosophy. Way of life. And they would make the world. They would take the church and make it look like the world in the last day. So you couldn't tell the, the world from the church. That's what's supposed to happen. Okay? That's what's supposed to happen. And guess who, where most missionaries are being sent out from what country today? America, right? America. Many missionaries have sent out from both America. Now, even back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, America was trying to Americanize the Christians wherever they went. In China, wherever. They were going to make the American system with their values and everything else. We're going to change everybody. We're going to make them middle-class Americans. Okay? Because that's the idea of the Jacobatic idea. All right? Period. They have gone circle from the spiritual. See, the Chemites couldn't hear what's going on in the world. They don't hear. All they care about is God. Okay? That's why the Muslims over there, those Jews, you're never going to... They believe, both of them believe that God's on their side, and they will die to the last man. You can't win a war with these people. That's not going to happen. They will die down to the last person because the material world don't matter. They only live there. They want that land because God promised them that land. Okay? That's what it is. Now we got the Jacobites. The Jacobites are philosophers and they always think they're right. <laughs> well, and then the Hamites. What are the Hamites? Inventors. Inventors. The inventors. The Chinese the Egyptians, all of these people. <coughs> the Hittites became the Chinese, by the way, as far as people know, the Hittites. Remember the Hittites? Mm -hmm. All right, we talked about them in the Bible. There aren't any over there left in that land. You know that? No Hittites. Mm -hmm. All right, they went to Cafe if you look at your little deal. All right, let's go back here now. Let's look at this. And uh, she shall become the bowl in the clouds and I shall see her uh, to remember a covenant, a cutting for eternity, O law, between God, Elohim, and between every soul of life, every nephish, hayah, uh, in all what? Flesh, basar, which upon haaris, the earth. All right. Think about all of these. Look about all the things that we've talked about so far. This is the origin, all of it. The philosophy, the politics, the religions, everything in the world. Right here is where it all began. In this next two chapters. This is it. And everybody thinks they're right. <laughs> all the time. They all think they're right. By Yomer. Elohim El Noah. All right. Let's read that first line there. Vayomer, Elohim, El, Noah, Zot, Ot, Habarit, Asher, Hakimoti. That sounds like a Chinese name or something. Benay, Yuvain, Kol, Basar, Asher, Al, Haaris. Are you getting pretty good at this, Shirley? Well, I can remember a few things. <laughs> yeah, I can remember. John, you're doing real good. Will, are you picking up some of this? I'm glad they put Earth in here quite often. Oh, that's right, <laughs> Haaris. We know that's what Haaris is. I find my place again. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And Biomer. Biomer is in there a lot. 
And he said, third person Nicene singular, cow, while consecutive, and perfect. Elohim. Elohim. El Noah. And said Elohim unto Noah. Noah. What does Noah mean now? Peace and Satan. Zot. This. Zot. The. Sign. Habarit. Of the covenant. Esher which. Hakimoti. I have established. I have called to establish. Between B'nai. Between me and you Bain, And between you. All flesh. All flesh. Flesh is flesh, isn't it? Animal and what kind of flesh? How many kinds of flesh are there? The Bible, the New Testament tells us the flesh of birds, the flesh of mammals, and the flesh of fish. All right. So he made this between all flesh. All flesh. All hearts upon the earth. On the earth. Now, I can go back to Noah now. Let's go think about Noah for a while. Noah was the son of Lamech, born in 2448 B.C. He died in 1998 B.C. He was aged 950 years. He was the tenth from Adam. Noah was born 126 years after the death of Adam. Noah was born 126 years after the death of Adam. Adam. Think about that. Fourteen years after the death of Zeph, he was a contemporary with Enosh for 84 years. With Terah for 128 years, with Abram for 50 years. This is Noah now. And Babylonians called him Noah. called Noah Isistrus, son of Olartus. The Chinese called Noah Yo, or Fohi. Everybody's got a Noah. American Indians had a Noah. Other names he was called are Prometheus, Deucalion, Atlas, Theus, Inachus, Osiris, Dagon, and many others. These are the different names that Noah was called. Okay. Abraham was 50 years old when Noah died. They knew the plan of salvation. Abraham knew the plan of salvation. He knew. He was awfully close to living when Abraham, even Adam died. It wasn't too long before he was born. All right. 918 now. 918. By you, Bene, Noah, Hayot, them, Men, Hatiba, Shem, Biham, Yafet, Bitam, who Abi Kinan 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 All right. I wonder why that was put in there. Done by inspiration, wasn't it? And they became the sons of Noah, Bene Noah, uh, the ones going out. From the ark, Nen Hatiba, the ark, Shem. Shem means name or monument. If you want to look it up in the Brown Driver Briggs, it's on page 1027 and 1028. Okay. Vitam, that's Ham there. All right, he's on page 325. By the way, his name means uh, warm, dark colored. And then we have. Va-yefet. Va-yefet. All right? Va-yefet. That's Japheth. And then it says, Become and Ham, he, Abi, father of 
Canaan. Canaan is very important. That's who was the curse was placed on in this little while. The curse is placed on Canaan. Canaan. All right. Now we have uh, Ham there. In Greek, like this. All right. Ham and Shem is like this. All right. Sam and Yephath Yephath Ham, Sham, and Japheth or Japheth What does Japheth mean? Huh? What does Japheth mean? Japheth means spreading Spreading? Spreading Spreading Yeah, spreading Japheth means spreading Spacious, wide, strong, barrel, abundant, extender, fair, all of those things. That's what J class is. Mm -hmm. All right. The J class will have blonde hair and blue eyes. All right. Blonde hair and blue eyes. All right. It says dark under there. Yeah. Uh, no, a, a ham is dark. Be Tom. See there where it says be Tom and Japheth is right there and then right over there is Ham and Ham. Oh, okay. And then I put down dark and swarthy underneath where oh, and Ham okay. is. Be Tom. Alright. Now Canaan means flat and low. Okay, flat and low. They say that these people were they lived in the low land and they were short people. That's what it says. These Canaanites, all right, originally. But something happened in that land of Canaan that made them get real big, remember? They became Nephilim. The Nephilim came into that land. All right. All right, 919 now. We got Ham, Shem, and Jacob down here. Shiloh Shaw. Eli. Danae. Noah, Umalia, Nafetitza, Cole, what's that one? Haaris. All right, so we got that one. Now, the earth, if you have your DNA done, does anyone here have their DNA done besides me? This is really neat. With some companies, they give you a chart. And they'll show Europe, they'll show the Middle East, and they'll show the Fertile Crescent, and they'll show Americas, and North and South America, and everything else. And if you trace that all back, and you trace your lineage all the way back to 6,000 years, you know where it's going to go? Right back to the Fertile Crescent. Right back to Mount Ararat, where it all spread. That's where it all comes from. And it goes exactly. You know, the bot, don't be afraid to study science or anything, real science. There's a lot of baloney theories out there, but don't be afraid to study something like this. You know, the, uh, the, the Hamites, uh, they founded a lot of false religions, and so did the Japhethites. Japhethites are the ones that founded what kind of uh, religion? Catholic? Uh, well, it was Huh? The Greeks and Romans. Uh, the Greeks and Romans. All the Greek and Roman the philosophies and uh, uh, their theology and philosophers. Okay? And it was some powerful, strong religions that the Apostle Paul and even Jesus had to stand against at this time. Okay? Of course, we have the, we have the religions of the Hamites also. But the ones that were the most disastrous, it seems like, were from the most intelligent standpoint. Because it tickled the fancy of people's mind. Okay? Tickle the fancy of people's mind. Did we do 9.18 already? Okay. 9.19 now. All right. Three of these, the sons of Noah, and from these was spread out, scattered out, third person feminine singular, perfect, having been scattered out all the earth. The earth's population was spread and spread itself from these three men. 
All of the races of humankind come from right here. This is where they go. Even if you do your DNA, it's going to show you it goes right back here just exactly like the Bible says. I don't care what these atheists and everybody else out there and these uh, uh, evolutions say. When it comes to DNA, they're going to chase it back to one place. That's where it's going to go. Just exactly like the Bible says it's spread from. By the way, who wrote the first five books of the Bible? Moses. Did he live around Adam's time or did he live? Oh. Let's look at here. We have way over here where Adam was. All the way through here on the down and here near Noah. Vision of the languages. Abraham. The Egyptian body. And here jumps up Moses. Way over there. How do you think he knew where all these people come from? Now, this is a long time from this period of time now. We're talking about Noah's time. Right here. And Moses wrote it down by inspiration. All right. Now we found out something else that's unusual, didn't we? When we looked at some of it, we looked. At, we were looking at this in, in the book of, uh, of Galatians also. Inspired. How did, uh, in the Greek language, what term does it use for inspiration? How did God pass this knowledge on to these people? Do you remember? Brother Adam, do you remember? How did God put Adam to sleep? Hypnosis. 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 How do you think Jim Jones got all them people killed and stuff? Charles Manson to control that people and everybody scared to death of even being in the presence of that. Every time God does something, the devil copies it. Doesn't it? Every time God does something, the devil copies it. I believe God transferred his knowledge to Moses of all of the books the book of Genesis, everything we're studying right now. This is God free. This was inspired. It was transferred through hypnosis, as it says, from the mind of God into the pen of Moses. That's how we have this information down here. I believe that you can stand this this information will stand the test of DNA <laughs> and history, genealogy, everything else. It'll stand, the Bible will stand the test. It'll stand the test. Now, if you was a, a, a Mormon, you'd have problems with this. What? Who did the Mormons say the American Indians were? Huh? The lost tribes. The lost tribes of Israel. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When you look at American Indians, there was a guy by the name of Charles Gatewood. Anybody ever heard of the name Charles Gatewood? Yeah. Anybody ever seen the movie Geronimo? Charles Gatewood was a real character. I have a book that he wrote at home, His Life Among the Apaches. Now, he was uh, uh, really educated. He could speak Apache, and he was the only one. Well, Tom Horn, you know who Tom Horn was? Yeah, yeah. Tom Horn and Gatewood was the only people that Geronimo would have anything to do with. And Gatewood, Lieutenant Charles B. Gatewood, said in his memoirs, he said, I think the American Indians are closely related to the Chinese. Well, what was the common sense consensus of a lot of people at that time? Especially since the Book of Mormon hit the market. How did... Uh, Herbert Armstrong get his theories going. The Lost Ten Tribes. The Lost Ten Tribes. The Lost Ten Tribes. The Lost Ten Tribes. Tribe. And of course, the Book of Mormon, actually the Book of Mormon was written by Solomon Spalding, a Presbyterian minister, and all it was was a fairy tale. It was a historical novel, but make-believe history. Science fiction, so called. And how did, how did those... Uh, Israelis get over here to the American continent. Do you know how they, according to the Book of Mormon, how did it happen? 
They got in a submarine and they crossed, they crossed the Atlantic. They got in the submarine. And in one place in there, it says that they were get, they got down there and they got real hot and real stuffy. And so God told them to drill a hole in the top there of the boat and a hole in the bottom there of the boat, the submarine. Now, if you put a hole in the top of the submarine and a hole in the bottom of the submarine, what do you have? You have a sinking boat. <coughs> but, you know, they believe that. But will the church of... Will the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, will their philosophy and theology stand the test of the Bible? No. DNA? No. Not going to happen. All right. But the Bible will. All right. You know, for the first many years of their existence, they were very adamant that they were not even a Christian religion. Yep. That only happened much later. Oh, they want to be known as Christians. They gave them opportunity to be Christians. Yeah. Well, same thing with the Seventh-day Adventists, which are Judaizers today. For the first 50 years, I think, or so, they were very adamant to anyone that wanted to listen, we are not Christians. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> well, they still are. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they still are. They don't know their own history, most of them, I think. Bye, you Noah. Ish. Ha Adama. Ha. I mean. Ha. Vai Yitta. Vai Yitta. Karim. Right. Let's look at this. And he began and kept on Noah as man ish of the ground in other words if he was a man of the ground what was he? Farmer. a farmer and he planted and kept on planting karim vineyards or a vineyard vineyards he planted vineyards what, what, what is a vineyard? grapes grapes alright so he was a great farmer wasn't he? Vayishiti. That doesn't look like a very long word, but it is. Vayishiti. Men. Hayayim. Hayayin. Get it right in a minute. Vayishkar. Vayitdal. Bitovet. Ahala. All right, now here we are. We, you know what? I was raised up with a bunch of drunk Indians. Yeah. I, boy, I grew up with drunk Indians. And when you Indians get drunk, you know what they do? They start beating, her, beating each other up and pulling each other's clothes off and shooting up to the walls. When they got drunk around my place, they got the rifle out. They start beating each other up, pulling their clothes off, running around half naked screaming and hollering and fighting. And I got the little rifle I got at home, and they take it and they start shooting the flies off the walls on the inside of the house, of course. You know what knocks off the shelves and everything else. When people get drunk, they do crazy things, don't they? And he uh, kept on drinking from uh, the hyen, from the wine. What's, it, what's the word there in, uh, in Greek? What would be the equivalent in Greek? We get our word right out of it. Wine is oinos. Oinos in Greek. Oinos. Say oinos. 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 All right. And here is the yin. Hayin. Hayayin. 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 The wine. I remember one time my Uncle Bill. My Uncle Bill was a wine <laughs> And old Gary Harwell and I were out in the backyard. We dug some little holes out there, and we were throwing dirt clods at each other. And one of the dirt clods hit in the in the, in the hole that we they were make believe grenades. And then what they do? What the army guys say when he, when a grenade goes in the hole? What does he say? Fire in the hole. And we'd say fire in the hole. 
and it's a fire in a hole. Like I'd say fire in a hole to Gary when he hit that one, and, and he would, we were back and forth, fire in a hole. We were bombing each other with grenades, see these dirt walls. Bill comes out of the house and he said, who called me a wino? And started trying to kill us. <laughs> trying to call and kill us because we were saying fire in a hole. He said, who called me a wino? Wine does weird things to you. I don't think, you know, the earth was totally changed from before the flood to after the flood. First of all, before the flood, there was that, that, the earth didn't have rain. It didn't have seasons quite like they have it today. And there wasn't any rain, and they didn't have to water the gardens or anything else. And, of course, when they took the canopy off the earth, when the ocean and the sky ceased to be, and now there's cloud, uh, some people think that the wine began to ferment, to corrupt itself, like leaven. I have a pig, her name is Wilbur, Dakota named her, of course. And uh, we have, uh, I go out there every year, and I, I'm uh, kind of the volunteer sheriff of the farms out there. So I go out there and watch over all the farmlands and everything. Anybody coming around out there, I'm out there trying to stop them, you know. And calling them at the sheriff or running them off, one or the other. Well, so they give me this wheat. Every year they have a wheat harvest out there, and I go get the wheat, and I take it out there and put barrels of wheat. And then pigs, you know, they don't have any grinders in their teeth to do all like a cow does or a horse or whatever, or a gizzard like a chicken. And so I have to take the wheat and put it in a barrel, a, a little five-gallon barrel bucket, whatever you'll call it, and I pour water in it and wash it out, and then I leave it there. After two or three days, you know what that wheat smells like? It smells just like beer, because that's what beer is. You take it in there now, it'll naturally ferment. You don't have to put yeast in it. Now... <clears throat> The more sugar it's got in it, the more alcohol it has in it. How much sugar does grapes have in it? A lot. A lot. <coughs> now, my grandpa used to, well, almost all of my family were bootleggers. Did you know that? All of them bootleggers. Almost everything I got at home, my grandfather, my skillet I cook in, my grandfather traded whiskey for, that rifle he traded whiskey for, no watch I had he traded whiskey for, everything he got he traded whiskey for. And of course, Sam Paul. Uh, my great-great-grandfather was a bootlegger also. He was a marshal, but he was also a bootlegger. They traded whiskey. But I have my grandfather's recipe for whiskey. You take some bar malt, and you take rye, and you take wheat and barley and corn, and you mix it all together, and then you, you take this 10 or 15, 20-gallon bucket, you put all this down in there, and then you know how you make the whiskey? You have a lot of alcohol in it. You pour a lot of sugar or molasses in it. Just pour it in there. The more sugar you have in it, the more alcohol it will have. You know what brandy is? Brandy is a type of fruit. It's like wine. And then they distill it to where only the alcohol comes out, and it's pure alcohol with a fruit flavor. But regardless of what you do, the more sugar you have in there, the more alcohol you have. So since this wine is sugar, grape juice, genomatis tes on flu in Greek, that's the fruit of the vine. Genomatis tes on flu. Okay? Now this has got a lot of sugar in it, so it's going to have a lot of alcohol in it. So this wine, this oinos, this hyene, this was a highly intoxicating drink. He didn't know what it was, but boy, he's going to find out what it is. Okay. He planted this. You don't think Noah knew it would do that? I don't think this happened before the flood. Oh. This is the first season after the flood now. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is when it, things began to corrupt and ferment, and that's how you get... That's why you soak wheat for a pig. So it's partially digested, so it's soft, okay? But when it gets that way, then we have natural fermentation and it becomes beer. Whiskey is a fermented 
grain of some sort with a lot of sugar in it. And then they take that and just heat it up, keep the beer in it, or like the wine, and alcohol, not very much, you can't boil it. You just heat it up where the alcohol comes off, and then in the movies, you know, when you see all these movies, you see this worm. That long pipe mm-hmm. comes out of there, it goes through this, and it's got a cold, cold, cold water, and then on the other end comes out pure alcohol. Pure alcohol. The sweeter it is, the more alcohol you have in it. Okay? It. So fermentation is kind of a decomposing. It's a the same thing in bread. The fermentation comes from yeast, which is corrupting it. And how do you kill the yeast in bread so the bread won't just destroy itself? You just can't eat raw bread. Cook. You could give you a bellyache, yeah. but you cook it, and the heat kills it to where it won't continue to corrupt the wheat. The same so, thing. That that wheat out there, when I do it over, it's going to be bubbling. This wine was bubbling. It had natural fermentation in it. Okay? He never had that before. Never Does your pig get drunk? What? Does your pig get drunk? No. So there was no fermentation. She's not half looped all the time. <laughs> <laughs> there was no fermentation before the flood. I don't think there was fermentation before the flood. This is corruption that came in. Okay? The earth. And mankind lived a long time before the flood, too, didn't it? Yes. A long time. Where did my water go? <coughs> Mary Lynn, where did my water go? I thought you had it. All right. Well, I need it. <laughs> All right. And he drank from the wine, from the wine, and uh, he became intoxicated. And that be say is how you say it in, in, uh, in Greek. He became in pocket. He, we, we, you know, uh, method, what is this? Method? Meth labs? That you have, that's where our word meth comes from. Think about it. From what? The Greek word. The Greek word, meth. Meth. That means drunk. And he became drunk, and then he uh, got naked, and he uncovered himself, all right, he became uncovered, in the middle of his uh, into oiko atol, is what it says in the Septuagint, in the house of him. Now this tent was his house, okay, that was his house, it was a tent, a movable house, but it was a tent, okay, in his house. He uncovered himself in his house. He got drunk and he got naked. As simple as that. Vayar, 22. <coughs> Tom, Avi, Shinan, Et, Erdot, Avir, Averi, Ya, Ya, Get. I should have said thy. I said that in biblical Hebrew. I've been teaching you. Thy, y'all get. Lishnek. Lishnek. Echav. Ba chus. All right, now let's see what in the world happens here then. And Saul Ham. And kept on seeing Ham, the father. The father of Canaan. Canaan. Et Nechus. Erebon. Nechus of his father. Thy Yogit. And uh, calls to announce Mishnah to his two brothers. I'm going to turn over this old fashioned thing. He calls them out to his two brothers outside, on the outside. Exo is what it is in Greek, on the outside.
Having gone out, he announced to the two brothers of him. Now, there's all kinds of theories of when these boys were born. But these boys are probably a hundred years old by now. So they're not kids. Alright? They're pretty pretty up there in age. They're grown. Now remember how long did Noah live before he died? Nine hundred and fifty years, all right. He lived a long, long time. He lived three hundred years after the flood, and three hundred and fifty years after the flood. Alright. Now there's a lot of uh of different opinions of what happened here. One of the things that some people think is that uh, Ham committed a homosexual act with his father. Okay? That's possible. That, that could be possible. Or he could have just absolutely humiliated his father, which was just about as bad, regardless. Okay? I guess that came with his watch, and that's what, you know, Yeah. This young man is a professional. Yeah. he would have been, been on that path. Now, evidently, Ham's favorite son was Cain, or Canaan. That was his favorite son. Every time you hear him, this is the father, Ham, the father of Canaan, or Cain. Okay. Now, I have written down here, the sons of Canaan would later reflect those same sexual sins in their false worship of God in sexual immorality. Did they not? In the land of Canaan. Who was one of the a queen of Israel that did this? Remember who she was? It's her name is synonymous today with evil. It's Jezebel. Alright, the Ashtoreth. Now Noah's sons and their characters are demonstrated in the next few verses that would color the whole history of mankind. Right here. It's going to color the whole history of mankind. What these boys were is going to be prophetic of what their descendants would become. Alright? Brother Hubbard said, Morality, cleanliness, and manhood is shown in these two boys and their descendants will share in their honorable behavior a honor uh, delicately performed in concert. The blessing would be honor these two honorable sons. Now let's see what he said about this. That's what he said about this verse Brother Hubbard did. Zayikoth Shem, Yepheth, Eph, Hasimloth, I can hardly read my own writing here. <laughs> By Yeshimu, Al, Shechem, Shinehem, Shinehem, Baye Lechu Acho Ra Nit Bai Chasu Et Ervat Avehim Yupanahim Acho Ra Nit be Erbot, Avihem, Lo, Ro. Let's go back and look at it. And took Shem, in synonym, or synonymously, and then juxtaposition. Shem and Japheth, the outer garments, the long robe, and placed. And kept on placing it 
upon the shoulders of both of them, and they walked backwards, and they covered et ervat the nakedness of their father, and their faces backward, and their nakedness of him of their father, lo, not they saw. In other words, they walked into the tent, they cut a long robe on their shoulders, and they walked backwards, and they covered up the nakedness of their father. Alright? And as Brother Hubbard said, by the way, the word nekesner is erbach, and in Hebrew is it's uh, gymnosin. Gymnosin. We get the word gymnastic, gymnastic out of that. Originally, when they did gymnastics in the Roman and the Greek theater, they were naked. Gymnastic comes from the word naked. All right. Brother Hubbard said, Morality and cleanliness and manhood shown in these two boys and their descendants will share in their honorable behavior. <coughs> All right. Go a little bit further. So they didn't see the nakedness of their father whether it was a homosexual act or just irreverence. They didn't take part in it at all. Matter of fact, they tried to cover it up. They tried to conceal him. By ye kiss. Noah. Ye. Me. Ye. No. By ye not. Yeah. Asher, Asal, Lo, Lo, Hakan, Hakata, right? Hakatan, that is Hakatan. All right. And woke up, and woke up, and that word uh, in the Greek is what? From hypnosis, from his dream, from his sleepers, or whatever. Noah, from his wine. Do you think alcohol can kind of hypnotize you just a little bit? Also, it does some weird stuff to you. It changes your mind. But my wife was telling me this morning about some some uh, behavior of these boys. Uh, her father was a uh, vice president of mobile oil company of the pipeline division. And he had some hillboy boys working for him. And these hillboy boys, most of the time, were real quiet and closed mouth like clams. Okay? But when they got drunk, sometimes they'd fight. And this one boy went over there to, uh, where was it? San Arto. And he got to fight with a bunch of locals over there, and he got beat up real bad, and he wrecked his truck and everything else. And, and he went up there, and the officials with the uh, General Petroleum or Mobile, as it was at that time, went up there and tried to cry out of him what in the world happened. He wouldn't say a word. They came down there and told uh, Marilyn's dad, I want you to go over there and find out what that hillbilly did. He wouldn't talk. He got drunk and they're normally they were very quiet, very peaceful, but when he got drunk, he was a fighter and a loud mouth and a boisterous. Alcohol changes your brain cells. It changes your personality. Right? Changes your personality. All right. So that's what had happened to him. <coughs> the necklace. And the necklaces of their father, from their faces backwards, they did not see. All right. 9.4. And awoke Noah from his wine, and he knew that which had been done, had been done to him. Now, how in the world did he know this? If it wasn't an act of sexual endeavor. All right. How would he have known? All right. That's one of the arguments they use for that. What had been done, his son, the youngest. All right. The word the youngest there in Greek is Neoteros. Neoteros. The youngest son. 
And then he says here now, by Yomer. Arur. Arur. Let's roll that one a little bit. Arur. Okay. Canaan. Eved. Ava. Avadim. Yeyeh. Li Cha Av. Alright. And he said, cursed, having been cursed, Canaan. When Canaan, when Ham did the act, he cursed his son. Now, how much do you like your children? Evidently, what was Ham's favorite son? Canaan. Or Canaan. When he did this, he automatically cursed his son which was actually innocent of the act. Okay. Now he could have been like Randall said outside laughing about it. The boy was there. The child was there. The son had been born. They had children. Ham, Shem, and Japheth had children. Okay. And here we have Canaan over there. It doesn't mention them hardly mm -hmm. enough. Well, it just doesn't mention them. It ignores them. Because Canaan is the one that we're going to be looking about. Okay. Now I said he's going to be a he's going to be a servant. He's going to be cursed, having been cursed, a servant of servants. And we have uh, Avani. Avani means what? Lord of lords. Lord of lords. Avani ha Avanaim in Hebrew. As an eye, king of kings and lord of lords. Now this guy's going to be a servant of servants. A servant of servants. Painted it. He's going to be a servant of servants. A servant to servants. Canaan would populate what country? Canaan land. The land of Canaan, which is Palestine today. Okay? Or Israel. That's where it is. They would go in there and they would plant vineyards and build farms and have animals. They'd have all kinds. They would populate the land of Canaan. And of course, now, Israel is going to go down into Egyptian bondage many years later. Okay? And they're going to do what? All the time they're down there Canaan's descendants are building up the land. And God says to them that I'm going to give you this land. This is going to be your land. Your land. So they would become servants. Not only that, but they would be annihilated to them. This is the land of Canaan, pretty much. These people were the curse was upon. A lot of times, and a lot of in, in a lot of history, it will have the black people as that's the reason why they are slaves all over the world. That's why they are slaves. But in all reality, the real curse was not upon the Hamites, but upon the Canaanites, which would concede their land to the Jews when they came into the land. Right? A servant of servants. In Greek it says, Kai pain epikotos. Canaan, Pace, Oikates, Estai, Tois, the brothers of He shall be a slave. He shall be a slave to the brothers of him. To the brothers of him. Now, let's look at this. Get your little hands out for a few minutes here. For a few moments, let's look at it. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The first born was, was Japheth. The second born was Shem. And the third born was Ham. Now let's look at these people. We're going to see all of these things, the fruition of it, come out in just a few next few verses. Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. How would Canaan be the, the servant of Shem? He was going to go build into the land of promise, and he's going to build the land up. And God said, I'm going to give you a land flowing with what? Milk and honey. So if you have milk and honey there, you have population. 
And he told them to go in there, but don't kill everybody off or anything else, and just slowly take over the land. Because the wild beasts would overtake them if they killed everybody. Now Ham. Now these are, it says there, Ham, it says physical, the great artisans and builders of history. The Chinese. The Egyptians. Okay. The Mayans. The Aztecs. All of these come from this. They are, are the greatest doctors. They are the greatest healers. They are the greatest physical. They, they live in a physical world. They did physical things. They made inventions. Tremendous inventions. <coughs> Shirley, what if somebody took you and dumped you up there in the north, northern hemisphere, up there by the North Pole? Just think about that for a while. You're living out there in the land of snow and ice. How are you going to stay warm? Well, those Hamites up there figured it out. They made igloos. And they made oil, and they had whale oil, and they had these little whale oil lights in there that also produced heat. And they used all of these animal skins and everything place where you wouldn't think anybody could even live, would you? That would be totally an absolute talk about a desolation. Quite desolate area. So cold that you couldn't possibly live. But they lived. And they, you know that they invented the telephone? So they talked from igloo to igloo. The Egyptians learned how to build batteries so they could have lights when they built the pyramids and everything. They invented almost everything. But it's not science. True science was the Japhethites. Where they took these basic inventions and then perfected them. All right? And the Shemites made money on everything that everybody ever did without really having to do a whole lot. Hamites, Canaan. Cursed be Canaan, the servant of servants shall be unto his brethren. All right, and Japheth. Intellectual, scientific, philosophic, philosophical, the philosophies, the philosophers. The philosophers. We're going to talk about some things, but uh, let's talk about who was a Chinese philosopher? Confucius. But he really wasn't a philosopher, was he? Buddha? Buddha was that. You go way back at that time, and they made that into a kind of a philosophy. But they were Aryan. Okay. It was the Japhethites originally. But let's go back to Confucius. What did his sayings... What, what was the sayings of Confucius? You go into a Chinese restaurant, you get these... You used to have fortune cookie, and it says, Confucius says... And everything was a practical wisdom is what it was. Just practical wisdom. It had, didn't have anything to do with philosophy at all. Practical wisdom. Things that you could live and practice every day and you would be better for. Philosophy is an abstract thing. Confucius spoke concrete sayings. Things that really took place. Not philosophy, but concrete ideas. So he was You're, a real writer. Yeah. Well, Will Rogers was the Indian, wasn't he? As I say, Confucius was their Will yeah. Rogers. Uh, he was their Will Rogers. How do you live in a world and how do you get along? You have a sort of law of the golden rule, so to speak. All of that. We're going to study this a little bit more. Now let's look at Shem. Elam, Ashur, which is Assyria. These are all Shemites, by the way. A lot of people say, oh, those Arabs aren't Shemites. They're, they're Shemites. They're Shemites. This is where this is where they came from. All right. The Salah, Eber, that's Hebrew, Peleg, Ru, Serek, Nahor, Terah, Abram, Nahor, Haran, Lot, Joktan, Lud, Aram, Uz, Hugh, Gether, and Mash. And down there below, what does it say? At the very bottom of that line. Messiah. All right. Now let's look at the Hamites here. 